year with the Connecticut Sun, and he has uh, really gotten this program on track, looking to break through this year after consecutive playoff appearances, trying to take it a little further this year. The mantra for the Connecticut Sun is burn it down, meaning we are forgetting the past. Our eyes are on the future, and this is a Connecticut Sun team for whom there are great expectations. Indiana comes into this game trying to pull off an upset as the Sun try to get Shakina Strickland involved early. And the Fever, as I mentioned, Kim, it's very early in the year, but they look great in the preseason, 3-0, and they look just outstanding in their last second, actually last half-second victory the other night at New York. Absolutely. Fever, a team coming off just six wins, but you said it, they sure didn't look like that. Coach Miller was very complimentary of this team, especially the guard play and McCowan coming off the bench. They have to be ready. You're going to see a lot of that. Benajia Laney there jumping the passing lane. Kurt also told us before the game this is a an Indiana team that plays very aggressive at the defensive end. And Laney a little too aggressive on that play. She picks up the first foul of this game. Laney, a former member of the Connecticut Sun, and the Sun wanted to have her back, but Indiana outbid the Sun and several other teams to acquire her services as Alyssa Thomas ties the game at two, and what a game she had the other night against Washington. Yeah, she really lit it up, and right there, that screen and roll, something fans will be seeing all season. Jasmine to Alyssa Thomas. Those two have that pick and roll down pat. Natalie Achanwa. That is Laney. They feed the post, and Strickland breaks it up nicely. The ball goes out of bounds, and it will belong to the Fever with only two seconds to shoot. Just underway here at the Mohegan Sun, and we are tied early at two, and with two on the timer, there is the inbounds, and the shot hit the top of the backboard. It goes back to the Connecticut Sun, who are rolling at home. They were 13-4 and four last year inside the Mohegan Sun, and you go back to last year and include the Saturday night opener. They've won eight in a row here at the Mohegan. Courtney Williams had trouble getting her shot going the other night. Shakina Strickland hits the three, and the Sun have the 5-2 to two lead. Strickland struggled the other night from behind the arc, two for eight. It's a good sign early for Connecticut. And that play will make Coach Miller happy. He said two things he'd like to see better tonight, screening and shooting. So Strickland came off a beautiful down screen from Jones and knocked down the tray. There's John Quell Jones jumping into one and knocking it down. And the Suns have scored seven unanswered. How about this skill set of John Quell Jones, a 6'6 center with the skills to take you out in the mid-range or the three-point line? Indiana can hit those, those outside jumpers. Their mid-range game is probably among the best in the league. Right. Erica Wheeler had a ton of those against New York the other night. You really have to have a hand up in her face. Ball got knocked out of Jasmine Thomas's hands. Erica Wheeler, 16 points the other night. As you see, Jasmine Thomas disrupted there by Wheeler. 13 to shoot here for the Sun, and the ball gets knocked around, and a little bit of a discussion on the possession, and it will stay Connecticut ball. Michael Price, one of the veteran officials in this league, on the baseline there. Courtney Williams doesn't go down. Dupree has the rebound. Candace Dupree, one of the stalwarts in the history of this league. Top 10 in points and in rebounds. Wheeler down the paint. Strong drive. A paint attack makes it a one-point game. And that's what we talked about in that key. First of all, you have to try and contain her, but if she blows by you, you cannot let her waltz down the middle of the lane for a layup. You have to slide in for some help. A high-low action, and Jones fading out and missing, and... The Fever have a chance to go back in front. They led early 2-0 in the sum of the 7-0 run. Now Indiana trying to go on top. And they are on top. That's Benajia Laney. Laney not considered the greatest outside shooter, but she has great confidence. And that was great ball movement around the perimeter. And Achanwa really steady setting that screen to get Laney the open look. 
Seven unanswered points for the Fever. Jones rolling down low, takes the pass from Jasmine Thomas, hit the shot, and it will count. She was fouled. So a possible three-point play coming up for Jonquil Jones. Here's another look at it. Jasmine Thomas, the veteran point guard, off the screen and roll. Jones, great job of rolling right to the rim where she is so tough to defend once she catches it that deep because of her length. Jones had a double-double the other night, 10 points and 14 rebounds, and completes the three-point play the old-fashioned way. The Sun go back on top by a point in what has been a game of early runs. Seven unanswered for the Sun, nine unanswered for the Fever. One-point Connecticut lead. Wheeler has her pass batted away by Jasmine Thomas. Dupree, nice fake, drills it home. And that's just a, a steady veteran ball fake right there. Took her time, gets the defender in the air. It doesn't always have to be 100% speed. Sometimes the slower a shot fake is, the more effective. So the Fever on top by a point, and the Sun give it up on the turnover. It's a traveling violation on Jasmine Thomas. Sun beat Washington 84 to 69. Took control of that game in the third quarter for the big run, outscoring the Mystics in the third quarter. Beat a Mystics team that played a good part of that second half without Christy Tolliver and Elena Deladon did not play the other night for the Mystics. The Sun did a good job handling business on opening night. Laney, now it's Shawa takes it. Thomas has the rebound. The other Thomas, Jasmine on the wing. Sun down a point, almost midway through the first quarter. Nice, strong drive. Jones lays it through. Sun on top again by a single point. Woo, how lethal is that pick and roll with Jasmine Thomas? It could be Alyssa Thomas. It could be John Quill Jones. Great decision making. Knows when to give it up. She's got some good hands to throw it to. Off the miss. Sun get it back. Laney misfiring. Williams trapped. Jones, Thomas, Strickland, Jasmine Thomas off the mark on the three. Great ball movement, just couldn't finish. Sunfoul, we'll call John Quayle on that, that last foul. That is her first. And the Fever will inbound. They are 1-0 like the Connecticut Sun. What a win they had at New York the other night with, of course, uh, Tierra McCowan making the headlines with the uh, buzzer beater on a beautiful play set up by Candace Dupree. Tiffany Mitchell in the game now for Indiana. That is Kelsey Mitchell with the left hand, puts it up on the run. John Quell secures another rebound. Jasmine Thomas splits defenders and drew the foul. A nice strong drive there by Jasmine Thomas. And that'll bring us to a timeout. And so a couple of free throws coming up for the Sun when we come back. 4.31 to go in this opening quarter. The Sun on top by a point. For the Connecticut Sun, they won game one in great part because of the play of that woman, Alyssa Thomas. More on Alyssa as we check in with the third member of our crew. Here's Robin Brown. Well, Bob, Alyssa Thomas with the first bucket tonight. And we saw AT post a team high 23 points on opening night. She had such a performance that Washington's head coach, Mike Tebow, said, like every other team who walks out of here when they lose, you've got to do a better job at figuring out how to guard Alyssa Thomas. And she's not a player known for glitz or glam, just one that likes to grind every gear. But AT will tell you she's just out there playing ball. Thanks, Robin. And uh, Mike Tebow uh, had high praise for Alyssa Thomas. Um, Alyssa's teammate, John Quill Jones, was asked the same question, what makes her so difficult to defend? And John Quell says, listen, she's playing at the four. She's a post player, but she's able to take the ball and dribble and um, creates big matchup problems. 
Well, it's funny that John Quell Jones says that because she's equally, if not more, of a matchup problem. That is part of what makes this Connecticut Sun team so dangerous. Their two post players create such matchup problems because of their skill set, their ability to put it on the floor and shoot from the outside. Kelsey missed, Mitchell missed the three, and there is Alyssa Thomas off of the spin, and then it is John Quell Jones rebounding. Some Harlem Globetrotters-esque dribbling. And then Courtney Williams had it in the lane and came up short. I would just like to know what other 6'6 six, six center can spin dribble like that, fall to the floor, and keep it on the ground and, and not get that dead ball. That was impressive. Another miss from Kelsey Mitchell, John Quell Jones, the acrobatic one, comes down with the rebound. Now she'll put up a three. A little too strong. Sun lead it by three. Three and a half to go in this first quarter. Tiffany Mitchell, strong drive to make this a one-point game. And that time the Sun just got to her too late. She is a player with an extremely quick first step. You cannot get to her a step late or she'll be at the rim like we just saw. It's Courtney Williams driving hard, having it swatted away by Tiara McCowan, who just checked into the game. McCowan, six foot seven, and she is going to be a force in this league. And this is what she brings, the rookie out of Mississippi State. Once she enters the game, the landscape defensively just completely changes for the Fever because of her presence alone. Thomas goes for John Quell Jones, and she got three that time from the rookie McCowan and scores. Yeah, that was a little bit of a, a welcome to the league rookie. They got her on the pick and roll that time, completely caught her sleeping. Mm -hmm. Three-point Connecticut lead. Achawa gathers it in. Nice recovery to score. One-point Sun lead. First bucket for Achawa. Her first points. Alyssa Thomas, kick out Strickland. Three in the air. It's good. Second three of the first quarter for Shakina Strickland. Sun lead at 19-15. We talked about the ability for Thomas to pass out of the post as Achanwa gets the backdoor cut, but that time she was able to catch it at the elbow and find Strickland opposite. There's that ball movement we talked about earlier. John Quill Jones down low to Alyssa Thomas, stayed with it, missed it twice. And McCowan comes down with the rebound. Denise Johnson in the game now for Indiana. That is the starting point guard, Erica Wheeler. Wheeling to the lane, and she traveled. We go back to Connecticut as we wind it down here late in the first quarter. Indiana's gone to its bench, and now Connecticut goes to its reserves as Lasia Clarendon checks into the game. She's beginning her first full season with the Connecticut Sun. Brianna Jones is on the floor as well for Connecticut. Sun lead it by two. Here's Jones, strong drive, kick out Strickland. Three is up, rims out, loose ball foul. Looks like it's going to stay at the Connecticut end. It's going to be an Indiana foul. And a Chan won the loose ball foul. Sun will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Indiana will be over the limit, and the Sun with just one foul in this first quarter. 1.38 to go in this opening quarter of play. The Fever have already done something they had not done in the six years as Clarendon floats it up. No good. First time in six years the Fever had won an opening game. It's been seven years since they started 2-0. Contact as Johnson was dribbling across the foul circle, and this will be a Connecticut foul. So Strickland picks it up. Morgan Tuck checks in for Connecticut, replacing Strickland. Strickland had a good first quarter. Yeah, she really got some nice looks from her teammates. She was able to be in shot-ready position and really nice touch on those outside shots. Offensive foul. They might have gotten McCowan on the illegal screen, but we'll double check. It is McCowan. 
And the Sun will inbound with 1.23 to go here in this opening quarter. Good competitive game so far. All right, both teams looking pretty sharp offensively, and McCowan picking up that foul. She had a bunch the other night against the Liberty. It's just part of the game you need to adjust at the next level, how they're calling the game and what's allowed and what's not. McCowan did a good job on the steal and late whistle after the shot was in the air put up by Johnson. The whistle blew. Let's sort it out. So Alyssa Thomas to push underneath on a Chonwa. And so Natalie Chonwa will go to the line. And she'll shoot a couple here with 66 seconds to go in this first quarter. The Chama is coming off a career year, 10.3 points per game last year, just a tick under seven rebounds per game. She had six double-doubles, real breakout year for the fifth-year pro out of Notre Dame, a Canadian, and not the first standout Canadian to play her position for the Indiana Fever. Tammy Sutton-Brown is a name that comes to mind. The Indiana Fever are celebrating their 20th anniversary, and Sutton Brown, a member of their 20th anniversary team. Of course, when you think um, Indiana Fever and an anniversary team, the top of that list is the great Tamika Catchings. A lot of great players, though, have come through this Indiana Fever franchise, including a former member of the Sun, Katie Douglas, who had outstanding success both in uh, Connecticut and Indiana. Here's Clarendon who began her career in Indiana. She was the number nine uh, pick in the 13 draft by the Fever. Played last year in Atlanta, came over to mid-season trade to Connecticut, and she's been a really good pickup for the Sun. Yeah, between her and Jasmine Thomas, both of them are natural point guards. So to see them both in right now allows one to play off the ball. And Leija Clarendon, I think somebody who has a lot of potential, had a little bit of a down year last year. Now, Tiffany Mitchell, that long jumper. And we are tied at 21. Morgan Tuck, double team. Off of the miss, McCowan has it. And here come the fever. A little Looking a little bit of a smaller lineup right now for the Sun. You see Brianna Jones matching up with McCowan. I'd go right inside to her. Wheeler baseline drive. Strong delivery from Erica Wheeler. Fever by two. Shot clock off. Winding it down here. Five seconds to go in the opening quarter. Thomas curls to her right. Fires. Horn sounds, and Indiana will go to the sideline here at the end of one, leading by two. One down at the Sun, three to go. Fever lead the Sun, 23-21. Getting ready to start the second quarter. The Sun down a couple of points to an Indiana team that is uh, shooting close to 60% distributing the ball very well. And we, we mentioned it. This is a team that won six games last season. They certainly do not look like that. A lot of it has been the point guard right there, Erica Wheeler. She's got six points and five assists already. Here's a Chawa having her pass batted away by an active Brianna Jones. Brianna Jones, third year out of Maryland. Son we're going to be uh, asking a lot from her this year. There's no Cheney Gwumike for the Sun. She's been traded to Los Angeles. I think you know that by now, but we'll be seeing L.A. a week from Thursday here in the Mohegan Sun. Tiffany Mitchell off of the spin and off of the miss. The Sun have it back. Clarendon head up. Now sets it up. Bria Holmes into the game now for Connecticut. That's Jasmine Thomas. Tuck walked. Bria Holmes, a player that Kurt Miller very excited about adding to the team after missing last year with a pregnancy. But he says she brings so much length and height to the perimeter and just adds another element for the Sun in that sense. 
So the turnover totals a moment ago. It's been a pretty clean game so far, Kim. Yeah, we said it. Both teams are really assisting well. The Sun have actually assisted on all of their field goals so far. And how about that? Rhea Holmes has her first bucket in the WNBA in a couple of years. Remember, she was out last year because of pregnancy, but she is uh, back in the books, and she ties the game at 23. And a big applause for her. She's not from too far away from here in New Haven, Connecticut. And she native. wants another highlight here. The steal, the bucket. Four straight points for Holmes, and the Sun regained the lead, and yeah, she was a star at Hill House, won three straight state championships at Hill House. She had her number 23 retired by them last week, and she's off to a good start here tonight. And we saw her length on the defensive end as well, getting in the passing lane, pushing it out, able to bring it up for the layup. Tuck tripped. It's an Indiana foul. Tuck took the tumble. And so with the Connecticut Sun with Holmes scoring the points. Morgan Tuck, just another player on this Sun roster with a lot of size on the perimeter, but can take you off the dribble, can shoot it from the outside. They just have so many mismatch problems on this roster. Well, that's a big development in this game. Natalie Chawa just picked up her third personal foul. So the uh, starting five for the fever in foul difficulty as Clarendon comes off the down screen. Tuck re-screens and Clarendon floats it up off the glass, doesn't go. The rebound tipped around and Laney has it. Baseball pass tipped, gathered in by Wheeler. Lost it, got it back, Dupree. Laney will fire. Laney hits, nothing but net. Ties the game at 25. Nice looking jumper from Laney and a good hustle play by the Sun to not give up a layup on that one. But you have to be able to recover the shooters in transition. Tiffany Mitchell is banged at midcourt by Jasmine Thomas. She doesn't like the call. Michael Price made the call. There's Tiffany Mitchell. There's Morgan Tuck checking out. Courtney Williams checking in. And Tiffany Mitchell off of the bench for them near the night. As you see Jasmine Thomas also check out. She had a big game, 22 points. And um, she and Tierra McCowan combined for 30 three points off of the bench in that Indiana win over the Liberty. And that was a career high for Mitchell and 13 of those 22 points came from the free throw line where she was 13 of 14 so that's a player who loves to drive you have to keep her in front. That was a good second effort right there as Stephanie Mavunga, Mavunga a couple of times before we get the rhythm of her it's only name. the second game of the season. We're yeah. still getting loose. As Rihanna Jones drives hard. But anyway, they're going to need Mabunga in this game because of Achama being in foul trouble. Here's another look at Brianna Jones. Nice, strong take, able to absorb that contact going across the lane. Another player with the ability to play on the perimeter with a distinct size advantage over a lot of defenders. Free throw by Jones off the mark. She um, played 10 minutes on opening night on Saturday against the Mystics. Out of point, no rebounds, and makes one out of two here to make this a one-point game. Fever, as Kim mentioned, only six wins last year, but they were perfect in the preseason, and then they upset the Liberty on Friday night, and they're playing with some confidence right now. Dupree, one of the all-time greats, in the circle. Two to shoot. She knows it. She shoots it, and she knocks it down. How about that poise, that footwork, just keeping it alive, a little bit of a shimmy shake before she goes up with it. She is so smooth in that mid-range area. Rhea Holmes, strong drive, hit the backboard. And Dupree has that great basketball internal clock. Game goes slowly for the greats. Mavunga picks out of the double team and then threw it to Mitchell, who was standing on the sideline. So it's the turnover, one of the few in this game so far against the Fever. 
Beaver lead it by three. And here is Clarendon across midcourt for the Sun. Four minutes gone by in the second quarter. Alyssa Thomas sets the screen. Courtney Williams misses. Brianna Jones, good offensive rebound and put back to bring the Sun to within one. Brianna Jones, great position to get that O board. Mabunga let her slide right in front. You have to locate and box out. That was the first bucket of the season for Brianna Jones. Courtney Williams, the rebound. Thomas sets the screen. Courtney Williams got hung up in midair and turned it over, looking to give it back to Thomas. Now the ball's poked loose, and Courtney Williams has it again. Sun have the numbers, and a beautiful feed from Courtney Williams down to Holmes, and take that Clarendon, and the Sun regain the lead. And that brings us to a timeout. Well, Bria Holmes came out firing here to start the second quarter. Back-to-back -back buckets for the Sun, who lead it by one. Kim, the uh, Sun lead this game by one point, despite the fact the shots so far are not going down. Right, they're pretty lucky to be down just one. Indiana shooting 52% to just 34% from the Sun, but the Sun have been able to get some extra possessions by forcing five turnovers so far, but they got to look to heat up a little bit and start hitting some outside shots. Well, for the pick and pop, Dupree. Sets up Laney. The ball fake, leans in, tough shot, rebound in the air. Jones grabs it. John Quell had been on the bench for a couple minutes there. They were certainly missing her presence. She just turned it over. Little excited coming off the bench there. I don't know if that was quite a walk. It looked like she may have had her foot down on that ball fake, but you see her, really everything gets going for her with the rebound. You see her sky up to grab that last one. She has four rebounds to go along with nine points, but it's the fever off of the turnover who have it back. Tiffany Mitchell to the left hand, missed it. Mavunga the rebound, Dupree drills it home. Candace Dupree now has eight. It's such an interesting dynamic, this team who's looking to rebuild from two down years to have such a steady veteran and then some really talented young players. Recheck that total on Dupree. She has six, their leading scorer from last year, one of the all-time leading scorers in the history of this league, as Jones lays it through. Good setup. Sun on top by a point. And that was set up by Courtney Williams, who has struggled to find her shot so far, going back to the last game and in this first half, but it shows what else she brings to the floor, able to create beautiful dish off to Jones that time. Wheeler. Laney, Dupree, who does have eight, by the way. <laughs> Looking for ten, not there. Clarendon across midcourt, accelerates, drives hard. Oh, beautiful floater from Lasia Clarendon. Sun by three, shot of the game so far. Clarendon, just a simple hesitation around that three-point line, able to... Get the defender to relax for just a second, and then the blue by switch hands as Indiana answers with a three. They continue to stay hot offensively. Nigel Laney, the former son, now has seven. Williams looking to get it going, and that one drops Courtney Williams after missing her first four shots of the game. Finally gets one to drop. Son by three. Laney, under 10 to shoot, Tiffany Mitchell for Dupree, beautiful fake, and does it again. Wow, she's got that down. She's been doing this for a while. Oh, yeah, and that is just for the young hoopers watching. That's pure fundamentals. That is good footwork, steady on the shot fake, one dribble pull up. That is simple and very effective for her 14 seasons in the league. She now has 10. Collision there. 
Mavunga knocked down Clarendon. And that'll lead us to a break. Winding it down here late in the first half. 2.07 to go. Half number one. Center on top by point. Welcome back to the Mohican Sun Arena. Sun lead the Fever by a point, 36-35. John Quell Jones having another good night, and boy, was her last season ever the tale of two seasons. Yeah, you see those numbers there started off pretty slow. Ten points a game, made ten threes, but how about the last ten? Bumped her average up to 18 and a half per game, 26 threes, and Kurt Miller told me she is the fittest she has been. She had gained... 18 to 20 pounds last season. Ooh, I thought she was going to be right on cue there. But she has lost that weight. She thought it would help her bounce around in the post a little bit more. But she's so much more explosive now. And he said it translates to her three-point shots because of her legs. Candace Dupree gives the fever the lead again. She has 12. We now have had 12 lead changes in this game. And Laney trying to extend the fever lead off of the steal. Drives Courtney Williams did a good job getting back. And now Alyssa Thomas steps down the lane. The uh, Sun shooting numbers still below par. Under 40% for the first half. And we have a little more than a minute to go in half number one. The fever have the one point lead. Laney has it tipped away by Williams. Only four to shoot for Indiana. Wheeler driving hard. Found space. Missed the layup. Offensive rebound Mavunga, but she had it swatted away from behind. And the Sun have it back inside a minute to go in this first half. Jones will pop up a three. It's good. Jonquil Jones hits the first three of the game from somebody other than Shakina Strickland. And how effortless did that look? I mean... It looked like she almost didn't even need to use her legs on that one. Coach Miller says he doesn't want her to think she is a 6'6", two guard, but he doesn't mind her getting out there and knocking some down. Tiffany Mitchell from long distance doesn't go. Shot clock off. The Sun into the front court. Jasmine Thomas not hesitating, and she'll go to the free throw line and probably is a little greedy, would have liked more there, but she'll try and get two from the foul line. Jasmine Thomas just slicing through the Indiana defense. Slips through two players. Help doesn't come in time. She is hyped up and arguably so undoubtedly the leader of this team. The extension of the coaching staff on the floor and in practice as well. Former All-Star steps to the line. Misses the first free throw. Jasmine was two for two from the, from the line the other night. 13 points, six assists in the opening night victory over the Mystics. She was really impressive to watch in practice last week. She would break things down for the younger players. She would stop and suggest different ways that they should be defending things. Just a really high IQ. 10 seconds to go in the half. Indiana down by three. Dupree kick out. Two seconds, one, Wheeler, a two, doesn't go, and that brings the first half to an end. So Jonquil Jones with a late three to put the sun on top, and then Jasmine Thomas, a single free throw to add the final point of this first half to make it a three-point game. So the sun looking to remain undefeated in this very early portion of the WNBA season. I have a three-point lead at the half on the Indiana Fever. Competitive first half between a Connecticut Sun team that won 21 games last year and an Indiana Fever team that won only six games. But Fever playing well so far. So are the Sun. And one of the spark plugs for the Sun, especially early in the second quarter, Bria Holmes back with Connecticut. And she's standing by right now with Robin Brown. Bria, first basket in a Connecticut Sun uniform after missing last season. How comfortable are you feeling in Kurt Miller's system? Um, I'm feeling real comfortable. Like I said, I think this system fits me very well. Um, I love to run the floor a lot and get in the pass lanes, get steals. And this team loves to run, and I'm just happy to be on this team and be a part of this journey with them. 
Well, you talk about running, and in his last huddles, I consistently hear him say, energy, energy, energy. Where is he looking for that to come from? Um, definitely the bench players, for sure. It's going to come from our starters, for regardless, because they start the game out. But coming from the bench, it, it means a lot, having a lot of energy coming off the game, coming off, coming into the game, giving and bringing what we bring to the table. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Bob? Okay, thanks, Robin. The Sun had 13 points from the bench in that first half. Bria Holmes had four of those 13. It's a three-point game. Well, it was a big third quarter that propelled the Connecticut Sun past the Washington Mystics uh, Saturday night in the season and home opener for the Sun. They outscored Washington 23 to 12 in that third quarter. And here the Sun lead it by three again at the half. They were up three the other night at the half. It should, it should be interesting to see if they had that same kind of energy to start the third. The Sun were talking about that. They said, we've been a good third quarter team recently, meaning going back to last year, even in the preseason. They're looking for a little bit more consistency across the board. They, they called the win the other night an, an ugly win, which I think was a little strong. It, it was a good win, and I think what they meant by that, the players themselves, not the coaches, is that some of the starting players didn't particularly have their A games. Right. I think a lot of teams would be happy if their team played that way and called it ugly. But it, but Kurt Miller liked that they said that because he told us the biggest question about this team is how are they going to respond to adversity when, when they're down? Who's going to step up? How are they going to be gritty and tough? And he thought that that was a great win for them in that regard against Washington. And a good start. At the defensive end here in the third quarter for the Sun as they forced Dupree to uh, take a contested shot and it didn't beat the buzzer anyway. It's a shot clock violation. The Sun have it back. Connecticut score the uh, last four points of that second quarter to go up by three. And here's Williams splitting defenders, laying it up and putting it through. Courtney Williams with her second bucket of the night. And that was pretty. And great job by Coach Miller trying to get her going early. She's been struggling to shoot that time, ran her off of a screen to get open, and then took her off a ball screen, split the defense. But as it's been all game, Indiana answers right away. Kelsey Mitchell has been conspicuous by her lack of scoring tonight. She just scored her first two, so obviously Pokey Chapman at the half made a point of trying to get her more involved in the offense, and she responded. But we're going to go back the other way to the Connecticut end. Let's see what we have. To the Indiana end, it'll go after the Connecticut foul. And it's Alyssa Thomas who picks it up. Second on Alyssa Thomas and Dr. Bell Kelsey Mitchell trying to get her involved. Laney from the corner that rattled in and out. Jonquil Jones tipped it to Williams. And here is Courtney. Looking to get rid of it. Jasmine loops it down low. Batted away easily by Laney. Bad turnover on the Sun. Wheeler, Dupree. Laney. Sun by three. Here is Williams stepping into the jumper. And now she's starting to feel it. Courtney Williams finding... That rhythm, sometimes when you're in a little bit of a shooting slump, you just need to see the ball go through one or two times and showing her versatility on that one after driving, able to pull up for the mid-range. She missed her first four shots of this game. She's made her last three. That didn't go down for Kelsey Mitchell. Williams, here she comes again. This time the kick out. John Quell to Strickland in the corner. Thomas, three-pointer, a beauty as the Sun moved that ball all around the perimeter and they cash in on the three, leading to an Indiana timeout. 7.34 to go early in the third quarter and the Sun have their largest lead. It's an eight-point advantage over the Fever. Well, the Connecticut Sun have their largest lead of the game so far and some beautiful ball movement to set up their last basket. And how about this? 
a perfect example of a team who's comfortable playing together, loves playing together. The chemistry, Courtney Williams to Jones to Strickland, over to Thomas, the undisputed leader of this team, the recipient of the third pass of that possession. That is just beautiful team basketball and a big part of the reason why opposing coaches in this conference watch tape on the sun and realize that there is a lot that they need to defend. Yeah, Mike Tebow the other day said that Connecticut, they are the, the best offensive team in this league. And one of the reasons for that, Kim, as the Chama has it knocked away and the Sun have it back, is because with them, it's pretty much pick your poison. One player doesn't get you, the next one will. Jaquel Jones rolling to the hoop. That one does not go down. Jones has 14 points in this game to lead all scorers. Nice three there from Erica Wheeler. Erica Wheeler, another player who's really shown her versatility, extremely quick off of the bounce, great handle, but able to pull up from mid-range or the three-point line as she showed there. Yeah, she had a couple threes the other night against New York. This one makes it a five-point game. Thomas got off the shot as the whistle blew. Came from the far side of the floor. And Erica Wheeler gets called on the personal. Courtney Williams, the trigger, and throws it in for Jasmine Thomas. Jonquil Jones, three-pointer. Good again. Second three of the night for Jones. And the Sun matched their largest lead once again up by eight points. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but it's hard to watch her pull up for three like that and not think Kevin Durant-esque a little bit with that tall, wiry frame. That was a nasty collision right there. Courtney Williams and, and Mitchell, you'll get another look as they collide. That was a hard hit as Courtney went for the steal. And uh, she's up. Moving around and looks no worse for the wear. Easy for me to say. Well, she looks fine. She'll probably have a little bit of a sore spot tonight, but that is, that's her personality. That is diving after balls, absorbing contact, getting right back up. That is why this fan base loves her so much. Kelsey Mitchell, Wheeler, two to shoot. Wheeler floats it off of the glass. Pretty basket, Sun by six. Sun having a really tough time defending Wheeler. They're letting her get by off the dribble. They're not sending help when she drives. Well, Kurt Miller calls Indiana a great downhill team, and Erica Wheeler epitomizes that as Jasmine Thomas tried to sneak in. I said Jasmine. <laughs> it was Alyssa, of course, who had uh, 23 the other night against Washington, just a couple so far tonight for Alyssa. Dupree, the ball fake, and there's Alyssa Thomas. She does it at both ends, comes away with the steal. The Euros step. John Coyle Jones keeps it alive for Strickland, the three. Again, Jones keeps it alive, this time for Jasmine Thomas. Jones Strick playing volleyball, just tapping it up down there. Foul came out on top, so that bucket wouldn't have counted even if it had gone down. Indiana foul as we reach the midway point of this third quarter. Now Natalie Chama, who picked up three in the first half and had to sit for a good part of that first half, just picked up number four here at the 501 mark of the third quarter. So to bring in six seven off the bench, though, isn't a bad option for Pokey Chapman. Jasmine Thomas too hard, but Alyssa, the rebound is Strickland to three. Front rims it. Tiffany Mitchell. Fourth year out of South Carolina. Knocked to the floor. <laughs> Shakina Strickland pleading her case. <laughs> what? She can't believe that one. Take another look at it. 
She definitely got her with a little bit of an elbow. I don't think she quite realized no. she hit her, but she uh, inadvertently got an elbow up by, her, by Mitchell's shoulder area for sure. So the fever working in, and that is Kelsey Mitchell. McCowan floats it up. John Quell Jones defended. And here is Alyssa Thomas. Six point Connecticut lead. Third quarter from the Mohegan Sun. Jones steps back. There's a three. Too strong. Courtney Williams tried to track it down. And you know what? Her hustle keeps it at the Connecticut end. And Bob, the three didn't drop for. John Quill Jones, but again, what a display she is putting on as a 6'6 center. That time with a step back three off the dribble, more times than not, that is probably going to fall for her this season. Rachel Bannum checks in, replacing Williams, and there's Bannum. Strickland. Thomas Jones on the roll, didn't know the ball was coming. Turnover. Shanice Johnson. Double team. Sun doing a good job there in the transition defense. Tiffany Mitchell. Contested shot. Bantam the rebound. Great defense by Bantam off the bench. Containing Mitchell, knowing she's a driver, not letting her get around, and then contesting the pull-up as well. Thomas extra pass. They do a good job picking up Bantam. Under 10 to shoot for the Sun. Bantam shoots it and hits it. Rachel Bantam thought about it and said, I'll take it, and gives the Sun the nine-point lead. Ooh, that was pretty. That is just a pure jumper for Bantam, and that's not easy to do, coming in after sitting the entire game to come in and just splash one. That is a pure shooter. That's an offensive foul. It's going to be called on McCowan. And there's Bantam. Yep. They gave her some space, and... Can't do that. We saw John Quell Jones attempt the pull up. Bantam does it as well, except she gets it to drop. The Sun made uh, three three pointers in the first half. Their last three buckets in this game are three pointers. Thomas trying to make it four, and she does it. Jasmine Thomas with her second three pointer of this third quarter. And the Sun, for the first time, have a double digit lead. And again, Bob, unselfish basketball. John Quill Jones easily could have taken it in for the layup there. She made the pass into the corner. One extra pass up to Thomas. So Jasmine Thomas heads to the bench after knocking down the three that ultimately leads to a timeout called by Pokey Chapman. And take another look at that last shot. John Quill Jones again attacking from the elbow all the way in over to Strickland. Strickland has really thrown some nice passes out of that corner. Jones and Strickland both great three-point shooters, but they have made the extra pass to get a better, higher percentage look uncontested to Jasmine Thomas, who's really done a great job of being shot ready and having the poise to knock those down. Son are going to hit the road after this game, and this is going to be a, a challenging part of the early season for the Sun. They take on the Los Angeles Sparks on Friday night, and then a road game against the Las Vegas Aces, who, of course, uh, are considered by many to be the team to beat this year in the uh, WNBA, especially following the acquisition of the lift, Cam Beige. Of course, they already have Asia Wilson. That's a talented, talented club out there in Las Vegas and Sun are going to see Las Vegas and when they get together with LA they're going to be reunited with Sinead Kumake. That'll get a lot of national attention when the Sun play the opening game of that two game trip by taking on the Sparks. So the Sparks on the road, the Aces on the road and then back home a week from Thursday to again play Los Angeles. That's certainly a tough stretch. We saw those two teams, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, match up the other night at Mandalay Bay. And Aces pulled away in the second half, and Liz Cambage wasn't even in that game. So the hype seems to be pretty legit with that team that they have put together out in Vegas. 
Out of the Pokey Chapman timeout. Shanice Johnson driving. Nicely executed play out of the timeout. Ten point game. Shanice Johnson, a player who really hasn't played in almost two years, tore her ACL July 2017. Great to see her back out here and looking explosive. Well, the threes keep raining here in the third quarter for the Connecticut Sun. Their last five baskets have been threes, two of them from John Quell Jones, and the Fever turned it over. As Tiffany Mitchell caught the ball as she was standing on the sideline. This is a scary sight for the other 11 teams <laughs> in the conference right now to see John Quell Jones, who some may say had a little bit of a down year last year after a phenomenal 2017 campaign. She is out here splashing threes automatically, nothing but net. Scary sight. 15 points for the Sun on three pointers over the last four or so minutes of this quarter. Bantam tries again. Fouled in the act of shooting the three. And the who me reaction from Tiffany Mitchell, but they got her. And so a chance to add three more for the Sun, this time from the free throw line. And Rachel Bannum, an outstanding free throw shooter. Part of a great Connecticut Sun bench. Absolutely. This team has the depth and probably some players that could be starting on teams across the league, but that is the culture that they've created here. They don't care who's starting, who's playing the minutes, who's scoring. We've seen that on display with the ball movement, the assisting. Great unit. One more coming for Bantam. Trying to make it two out of three. With 2.01 to go in the third quarter. So we mentioned that the Sun were a strong third quarter team in their win over Washington on Friday and more of the same here tonight against Indiana. This was a three point game at the half but all sun here in quarter three. I don't think we've spoken enough about the good defensive job the Sun are doing here in this third quarter. Although Erica Wheeler has been able to beat them consistently in this third quarter. She now has seven points in this third quarter for the Fever. Well, Bob, you're right. A lot of time energy starts on the defensive end. So these third quarter runs last game to this game starts by getting stops, getting rebounds, allowing your team to shine and transition. So a lot of it has started with this increased discipline on the defensive end in this half. Johnson on the elbow. Switched hands. Loose ball foul. That's against Indiana. Mavunga bumped into Melissa Thomas. A little more than a minute to go in this third quarter. Sun trying to extend a streak that dates back to last July. You go back to last season. The Sun have now won eight straight games here inside the Mohegan Sun Arena. Looking to Go 2-0 and in the early season here. Holmes, high arcing jumper. Off of the miss, Indiana brings it into the front court with under a minute to go in this third quarter. Dupree hits again. Boy, she has been money in this game. Now 7 for 9 from the field. She has 14 to lead Indiana. I was just going to say they had slowed her down a little bit in this third quarter, but then hits her deepest shot of the night with a hand in her face. Jasmine Thomas so strong at attacking that basket that time with the left hand. Really does a great job of getting right to the rim, not shying away and drawing the foul calls. Erica Wheeler on the foul. It sends Jasmine Thomas to the line with 40 seconds to go in this third quarter. Rebound, Alyssa Thomas off of the missed free throw. Reset for the Sun, who lead it by a dozen. Brianna Jones had a poke loose, and she lost it. So a turnover against Connecticut. 
And Coach Miller can live with those turnovers. He talked to us before the game, say we can't afford live ball turnovers because of how good this Indiana team is in transition. So they haven't turned it over much, and it's been more in the half court. Shanice Johnson, three-pointer. Bria Holmes tapped it in the air, and this will be a loose ball foul. Let's see what Michael Price has. Brianna Jones picks it up, and Indiana to trigger with 11 and 2 tenths seconds to go in the third quarter. Mitchell having trouble on the inbounds. Mavunga for Mitchell. Mavunga tried to rebound the Mitchell miss. Ball got knocked loose. 1.4 to go in the third quarter. Really great execution defensively again by the Sun, knowing their matchups, talking on screens, not allowing a high percentage look. Dupree from the corner nails it. They're going to look at it right now. They're calling it a two-point field goal. We'll know for sure when we come back if it was two or three. But for now, they'll say Candace Dupree at two. She has 16, but it is the Sun, as it looks to be a two-pointer, who lead this game by 10. Good third quarter for the Connecticut Sun, led by three and a half. They're leading by 10 as we get ready to start the fourth and final quarter. Well, the three-point field goal was a big weapon for the Connecticut Sun in the third quarter. The Sun outscoring Indiana 22-15 to in the third. And 15 of those 22 points, Kim, came off of three-pointers. And I guess the only surprising thing for the Sun is that Shakina Strickland was not involved in that stretch. John Quell Jones, as you see, one of the best three-point shooters percentage-wise in the league last year. Well, she was. She hit two. Jasmine Thomas hit two. Rachel Bannum hit one. Sun can beat you in a lot of different ways. Alyssa Thomas was the big scorer the other night for the Sun when she had 23. She only has two tonight, but the Sun lead it by 10. And Shakina Strickland, she may not have scored any threes in that stretch, but she certainly got the ball moving and led to some assists. So as one of the best three-point shooters, giving up her own shot to get better looks for her teammates. Thomas, Bannum, steps back, three, good! Rachel Bannum again from downtown, and the Sun lead it by 13. That was fancy from Rachel Bannum. You have to have a hand up as soon as she catches it. She danced a little bit with the defender, so pure off of that step back. Ball knocked loose from Dupree, who recovers. Rare miss for her. And that'll be a loose ball foul on Rachel Bannum. But revisiting a point that we discussed late in that third quarter, good defensive job by the Sun in the third quarter, holding Indiana to only 15 points. Well, in the first half, Indiana shot over 50%. So I think there must have been some talk in that locker room at halftime about tightening up on assignments, knowing personnel, communicating on how they're defending screens. Everything's been a lot tougher to come by for Indiana in this half. But one person who hasn't seemed to struggle is Erica Wheeler, who continues to score from everywhere on the floor. 15 points in the game for Wheeler, and she has nine of those 15 in the second half. Rio Holmes, downhill drive. She has six. We talked to uh, Kurt Miller about Holmes and... Uh, kind of shape she's in post-pregnancy. He said she's in such good shape that basket counts. Dupree, a possible three-point play the conventional way. He said uh, she's in such tremendous shape, he'd like her to draw back a little bit. She's working so hard. Here's another look at Candace Dupree, who's been pretty automatic. Hasn't missed a ton from the floor that time. Getting the end one in her 15th season. Just a model of consistency. 
She missed the free throw. Brianna Jones committed the foul. Sun lead is 67 to 56 early here in the fourth quarter. The ball is deflected right to Pokey Chapman on the Indiana bench. Candace Dupree, 14th year in the league, and boy, she looks great. 35 years old, and she is in peak form. Clarendon driving right down the lane and taking advantage of the matchup. All right, she had Mavunga on her, a, a post player, able to use her speed to get right to the rack. Wheeler still feeling it, and that time she gets the roll. Between Wheeler and Dupree, who haven't missed much, it's a, it's a surprise that this game is 10 points. They just haven't had many other teammates stepping up to score tonight. Dupree thought she had the block. Holmes will go to the line to shoot, too. Seven and a half to go. And here's Bria Holmes, who... Robin Brown talked to her earlier about how she's feeling very comfortable, certainly looking comfortable. That one may have been all ball, though. Candace had a good piece of that one, I thought. In her last full year in the league, which um, was with the Dream in 2017, Holmes was a 64% free throw shooter. Misses the first one here. So it remains a 10-point game. One out of two for the New Haven, Connecticut native. You see that double team there by the Sun. That is some of the adjustments they've made. Double teaming on the catch in the post. This ball foul, Bantam. Well, it's Jones. Crowd didn't like it, regardless. Mavunga getting a lot of minutes out there tonight because of the foul difficulty. Natalie Achanwa. That's a big hit for them. She's been playing well defensively and really finding a rhythm offensively going back to last season. Tiffany Mitchell keeping Indiana right in this game. You can't get comfortable against this Indiana team. We talked about it earlier. They were on the losing end of a really bad run against the Liberty the other night and then came back and fought to the very end and won at the buzzer. And this will keep them right in it, a turnover against the Sun. Here's another look at it. Ooh. In, in real time, it looked like that may have been off of Mitchell, but we weren't underneath the basket. The official may have seen it yeah, go off of the sun knee. Yeah, they said it went off of Jones on the Mitchell hustle play. Here is Wheeler, three-pointer in the air. It is good. Erica Wheeler getting it done for the Indiana Fever. She has 18. That's her second three, and a 15-point Connecticut lead is down to six. We have a ball game here at the Mohegan. 6.39 to go. It's the Sun on top of the fever by six. Right, we invite you to follow us all season long on social media at Connecticut Sun. Love to hear from you. We'll be taking comments, questions, reaction, et cetera, and so on all season long. No complaints, though. <laughs> only, only positive energy on, on Twitter. <laughs> Good, luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> of course. Marker Wheeler's having a great game. 15 points in the second half, and she has shot the fever back into this game. Jones, Bantam, three. Bria Holmes keeps it alive for Tuck. Barreling down the lane. Doesn't go, but the rebound poked out by Holmes. And the Sun ever reset to 14. Clarendon threw it away. And then the Sun catch a break. <laughs> they catch a break because when the pass was thrown away, Wheeler was standing on the baseline. Oh, a foul. Well, I thought she was reacting to being out of bounds. See, that's the worst development for them. Yeah, Connecticut definitely 
Catching a break on that one, not capitalizing on the offensive rebounds. That probably should have been a turnover. Well, Robin, the uh, Sun during that last timeout had a lot to talk about, didn't they? Yeah, Bob, in that last huddle, Coach Kurt Miller posing a lot of questions, saying, how bad do you guys want it? Who's going to dig it? Who's going to get those rebounds as we're seeing happen right now? And we saw that lead dwindle that the Sun had. He said, these next pos possessions, we have to string together. Let's go. Well, Robin, that report couldn't have been any better time. Who wants it more? Who's going to grab the contested rebounds? Well, take a look. Leisha Clarendon. I'd say she's a veteran. She's been in about six or seven seasons, making a big time play. Courtney Williams, who hasn't done much in this second half. She had a good first couple of minutes. She gets her groove back. But this goes back to the big question Coach Miller posed for the season. How, are, how is this team going to respond when they're not on their A game? He called it. Right now, they are not. How will they close it out? How are they going to defend Erica Wheeler? Looks like he may be going into the bench. Someone's going to have to figure out how to play her. They are not doing a good job of keeping her in front. They haven't helped on her all night. She has waltzed to the basket time and time again. John Quill Jones just delivered a shot that, well, it looked like she was in trouble from the start, and somehow she, she made it turn into two points for the Sun. Quite a display she has been putting on so far. That's a turnover on the Fever. That's a traveling violation. And Aisha Laney, the former son, turns it over. So after Jones did a nice job maintaining the handle on the spin and using the glass, Indiana gives it up. We're more than midway through the final quarter now. Good game. Looks like the Sun are going to pull away here, but maybe... Part two of pulling away is in progress for the Sun. A 15-point lead had dwindled to six. But Courtney Williams, it's another jumper, and that lead back up to double digits with still plenty of time, 4.38 to go. Tiffany Mitchell down the lane. Impressive drive into traffic. Right over the top of 6'6", six, six, John Quill Jones, who nearly got a piece of that one, but a acrobatic finish. That's where Tiffany Mitchell is at her best, attacking the rim. Sar do it time and time again against the Liberty the other night. Jones throws a double team, so it kicks out. Clarendon, five to shoot. Clarendon has to shoot. Three second violation. It's going to go back to Indiana. We are far from finished in this one. And Connecticut definitely seems out of sync offensively right now. They came out of halftime just on fire moving the ball see if we get jasmine thomas back on the floor soon to get the ship back in order but just a little bit of a miscommunication right now for the sun offense wheeler tries again that was an Alyssa thomas foul down at the other end reset for indiana under four to go tiffany mitchell laney off of the miss, Courtney Williams. Off and running. Defended well by Wheeler. Still, Courtney stays with it and somehow got it to drop. That was a great job by Williams. Her teammates didn't do a great job of cutting to relocate and get open. So she said, all right, I guess I'll do this on my own. The 5'8 guard, great job of elevating on that jumper. 10-point Connecticut lead. Alyssa Thomas strips it and takes it away. Williams to the other end. Puts it up short. But Alyssa Thomas off of the Clarendon punch back. Grabbed it. The Indiana foul. Another hustle play in favor of the Sun. Tiffany Mitchell, great double team by Courtney Williams. Alyssa Thomas getting her right in the corner, the last place you want to be when you're in a trap. And again, you could just feel the energy rising again for this Sun team because of a great effort on the defensive end.
So the foul's called, and it's going to bring us to a timeout on the floor. Well, 2.53 to go. The Suns trying to put it away. They lead the Fever by 10. Well, if the Sun can protect a 10-point lead with 2.53 to go, it's going to set up a fun game on Friday night. Next game for the Sun, they visit the Los Angeles Sparks. 10.30 start from the Staples Center. The Sun looking to improve to 3-0, perhaps. They have not yet nailed down win number two in the season, but up by 10, 2.53 to go. Still a long way to go, but... The Sun, who began last season by winning their first five. Trying to make it a 2-0 start. The, the Fever have already done something this year that they did not do last year until June the 16th. They were 0-10 to begin last year. So they got their first win in their opening game. Disruptive defense again for the Sun. Better job that time on Wheeler, who's really had a field day in this second half. Better job reading that ball screen and sending a double to her. Kelsey Mitchell's had a tough, tough game. Three-pointer from the corner is good, and that was somebody who has had an outstanding game. Erica Wheeler now has 26 points. Another three for Wheeler. She keeps the Indiana Fever right in this game. Although, there's Jasmine Thomas with the answer and with the celebration. She's, she's fired up. She's always fired up. Always. I think she wanted a little N1 call. <laughs> on that one, but great job of going up and under that rim. Uh, beautiful pass from Dupree, and Natalie Chanwa, who has had to sit a lot of this game because of foul trouble, delivers the lay-in, and another two minutes to go. The Sun trying to close the lid here on this game, looking to improve to 2-0 at home on the season, and 2-0 to start the season. Courtney Williams off the hesitation. Jones has the offensive rebound. We'll stay at the sun end. Jones has had another nice game. 22 points. She did it on the boards the other night with 14 rebounds. And tonight, John Quell, seven rebounds and a team high 22. So it was Alyssa Thomas in the opener with 23. And John Quell Jones tonight, the offensive star for the Sun. But there have been a lot of individual highlights tonight for Connecticut. It just shows how many different players can hurt you. Jasmine Thomas has shot the ball really well tonight. But Alyssa Thomas, just a couple points here tonight after 23, but has gotten it done defensively, has rebounded the ball exceptionally well. Strickland standing her ground. Achanwa left alone. And Achanwa's absence from a lot of this game is certainly a reason why Indiana is not in this game as close as they'd like to. She's really instrumental in that high-low offense. You see Achanwa also a leader on the floor there that time. Grabbing Erica Wheeler, calming her down a little bit after that foul call. But Jasmine Thomas has just been on the attack. I could, I could coincide with Erica Wheeler there a little bit on that one. Not much contact, but, but Jasmine Thomas does a great job of putting herself in positions to make the official wonder if that was a foul or not. She's just been on the attack all night. She has only one speed, and that's, that's full out. And... She's that way all the time, practice especially. Yeah, I loved watching her in practice. She really was like an assistant coach on the floor and just posed so many different questions. Hey, coach, can we try defending the screen and roll like this, breaking it down for the rookies? Coming up a half a minute to go. Touch pass, Alyssa Thomas, John Quell Jones, and count another three. 
for Jonquil Jones on a beautiful setup from Alyssa Thomas. Fourth three-pointer of the game for Jonquil Jones, who now has 25 points. And she is celebrating on the Connecticut bench. And John Quill Jones, if you are a basketball fan and don't know about her yet, you better become aware quickly. She is a product of the Atlantic 10 Conference, George Washington University. And there has been talk of her as a potential MVP candidate this season. Two years ago, she was the most improved player. Last year, she came off the bench when Shanae Agumake was playing. She was the sixth woman of the year. And there is a lot of talk that she should be in the conversation for an MVP candidate. Obviously, we are very, very early on in the season. But what we're seeing her do tonight is something we haven't seen a lot of 6'6 six, six centers do in women's basketball, Bob. Well... We documented earlier her three-point shooting percentage from last season, number two in the league. She's made four of seven this year. Of course, she can beat you any number of ways. As that pass gets deflected, Sun playing hard defense right to the buzzer here as Kelsey Mitchell feeds Dupree. She's had a great game. And what will be an Indiana loss Ten seconds to go. Williams driving. Again, double clutching. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Jones's best game last year, scoring game, came at Indiana when she had 29 points. And um, she's close to that here tonight. 25 points for Jonquil Jones. And the Sun, um, were the, they were the highest scoring team in the league last year, averaging 87.6 per game. They had 84 in their win on Saturday night in the opener and Courtney Williams trying to get them to 88 here from the free throw line after missing the first. Makes the second. So another high scoring game for the Connecticut Sun and Pokey Chapman coaching right to the end. This Indiana team is young. The Connecticut Sun are young. You don't think of the Sun as a young team. They are statistically the youngest team in the double team NBA. These are the two youngest teams in the league. The Sun are on the cusp of doing some great things, and I'll tell you, it's not going to take this Indiana team long to get back to where they belong. This is one of the great franchises in the history of this league. 2012 double team NBA champions. At one point, uh, they made 12 consecutive trips to the playoffs. I haven't been there in a couple of years, but I think it's safe to say that don't count them out as far as potential uh, playoff aspirations are considered this year. Five seconds to go, and <laughs> that'll drive a coach crazy, won't it? An offensive foul on Chanwa, which wipes out the possession. It's been a tough night for her, it seems. Every time she, she comes out, she gets hit with a whistle. That is her sixth. So she is officially fouled out, but it's been a frustrating night for her, a player who really, as you mentioned earlier, had a breakout season last year and, and will be a part of their increased success this season. Well, the Sun will bounce it out, and the crowd celebrates. Another Connecticut Sun win. They are 2-0 to begin the season. And going back to last July, they have now won nine in a row at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Indiana Fever gave them a good game tonight, but it's the Sun who come away with the victory. You see your final score. The Sun turned aside the Fever 88-77. to So Connecticut 2-0, Indiana 1-1. Back to tell you more about how the sun put the wax on this one right after this.